Malachi chapter 1 verse 1 the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi I have loved you saith Yahweh yet ye say wherein hast thou loved us was not Esau Jacob's brother saith Yahweh yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. Alright, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with a uh, quick hit. And uh, Lord willing, I hope it's edifying. I saw this uh, news report, but uh, it wasn't from, you know, YouTube. I know YouTube has the uh, channel of this news report, but they don't cover the same. They don't put the real raw news on YouTube. So, you know, at first I was going to clip it and uh, try to take out, you know, what could be taken out so that it could be played on YouTube. But I decided to leave it alone. All right. So uh, there's one piece of it that was pasted together. There's one piece of it that was pasted together that I will use. All right, and it's just proven that um, you know Esau, Edom, all right, is ruling, and we in this NWO, this this force, for us to take a prelude for them to have this great reset, so they calling it, but the Lord said differently, all right. See Esau, Edom, he's in a trick bag now. Who is Esau, Edom? Who I'm talking about in particular? All right, it's these elite banking families. All right, starting with the house of the Rothschilds. All right, if your seed, your father's seed goes back to being a so-called white man, all right, so-called European, then you are an Edomite. All right, but mainly, you know, to speak about in this lesson is them Edomites that are the elites, that 1%, all right, the illuminated ones, the ones that run the world. All right, their agenda is to push a NWO. But they're in the trick bag. All right. See, the Lord is uh, basically, you know, driving them to the position in which he, the Lord going to take them down. All right. So I'm going to play this video and then I'm going to come back. Is climate action failure? Huh? Forget those silly little items like energy price shocks, runaway inflation, terrorist attacks or weapons of mass destruction. I mean, who needs to worry about any of that when there's climate change in action and extreme weather to worry about? Now is a historical moment, a time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It's at the end what, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. Don't forget that Klaus and his World Economic Forum have also promised us that in the future you will own nothing and you will be happy. How does he know that we will be happy? Well, Klaus also outlines in his book, Great Reset, that contact tracing is being positioned to become an enabler of mass surveillance. His words, not mine. Klaus also looks forward to a time in the not-too-distant future where America is no longer the dominant superpower. No, 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 no. But the world is run by China and a few of Klaus's World Economic Forum cronies, I presume. Anyway, back to... All right, this is uh, Malachi chapter 1 and 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, say of Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the saith Yahweh? Yet I love Jacob. Alright, because Jacob is the one who the Lord hath chosen. He did not choose Esau. Alright, when you go back to the story, Genesis 25th chapter, and you read 
you notice that Jacob supplanted Esau. All right, he supplanted him of uh, the uh, bless. He, just, he supplanted him of the birthright, and he supplanted him of the blessing. You know, and most people would think that you know that was wrong of Jacob. He wronged Esau, but that wasn't the case. All right, the Lord chose Jacob. It was ordained that Jacob was going to receive the blessing and the birthright. It was the Heavenly Father's will. All right, and real quickly, I'll prove that this is in the book of Romans chapter 9, 8. It says, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father's Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, which is Yahweh, according to election might stand. Not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You see? And then it goes on to say, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with, with God? God forbid. All right, because most people in their feelings will get mad and think that the Lord did something wrong. And he didn't. All right. Now, our, our power is always right. So, according to election, his election is going to stand. So, getting back to Malachi chapter 1 and uh, verse 3, which is written again. Well, it was written here in Malachi and it was also written in uh, Romans, the ninth chapter. The Lord said, I have hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. For the dragons of the wilderness. Okay, so Esau, the Lord said he hath hated, and he hath laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And it says, Where whereas Edom say, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. All right, so Esau is, is also entitled the border of wickedness. And what he's doing now in this agenda to push his NWO to turn us into transhumans, all right, put technology inside our bodies. This is why he's called the border of wickedness. And uh, right now the slogan is still there from from uh, this guy named um, Kyle Slobs, if I'm saying it right. I uh, can't say his name right. It's a weird name. But um, he uh, basically wrote a book. Uh, a book that basically uh, speaks about the title is. The title of the book, which uh, I can't. <laughs> I don't want to say the name of the first few words, which we all know as the Crown Royal. But the other end of the words is the great reset all right so if you look up his book and put in the great reset you will find it uh build back better and you've seen a lot of uh polit politicians and you know people spokesmen representatives go on tv and they use that slogan build back better because it's all according to his plan all right which is these plans of the elites which is to push the fourth industrial revolution so if you look up the fourth industrial revolution you will understand everything that's going on, you know, their, their drive, all right, their finishing point. And that finishing point is for us to have the MOTB, all right, which is that chip. Right now, we're going through the prelude, so don't get confused, don't get tricked, all right? The agenda is, is pushing toward the MOTB because that's the final goal. That is the final, the, what they call the, the all all right, the stamp, you know, that's placed upon you to be a perpetual slave forever. And that's why Yahweh Bashim Yahushai said in uh, Revelation 14 that he whoever takes that mark is going to be destroyed. All right. 
So it says, whereas Edom say we are impoverished, we will rebuild, we will return and build the desolate places. And Esau started building when they came back into power. And even still to this day, they're constantly building. And um, I was watching a few videos and a lot of a lot of these whistleblowers were speaking on how uh, every hundred years there's a depopulation uh, control. You know, basically they looking forward to depopulating every hundred years, you know, because they say that the people, uh, the, the people are, are more smarter, you know, more wiser. And these elites are afraid of that. So that's one of the cases why they depopulate, you know, and to, you know, basically reset. So now we in that reset period again, and this is what we're going through. But this time Esau is going to be taken out of power. All right. So real quick, I know I'm doing a lot of talking. I want to make it quick. Let's go to Psalms 10. It says 10 and 1. Why standest thou far off, O, o Yahweh? Why hidest thyself in the times of trouble? The wicked in his pride do of persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. All right. So let them be taken in the devices that they imagine. They looking to destroy us as a nation. All right. Which is you, which is you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians. All right. You Israelites, you tribes. They're looking to destroy you once and for all so that you can never you know, receive that promise and blessing from the Heavenly Father. So their goal is to upset Bible prophecy. All right. And real quick, I get that. This is Psalms uh, 83 uh, and 1. It says, Keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thou peace and be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thou enemies make a tumult. They that hate thee have lifted up the head. They that have taken crafty counsel against thou people. And consulted against our hidden ones. They have said come. And let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel. May be no more in remembrance. Okay. And really you know we, we are. You know the tribes. Of Israel is Yasha Allah. Alright in the Hebrew. Which is he prince power. Meaning the men are the princes. Of the power. Okay of Yahweh. Alright by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And you women are the daughters, okay? Or princesses, if you want to say. But the point of the matter is, it says, They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. And right now, we've been divided as a nation. You know, you got Puerto Ricans, you know, praising the Puerto Rican Day Parade. You know, praising their land, Puerto Rico. You got Haitians divided, you know, on the island with the Dominicans. And even on that island, they divided. You got Judah here in America, you know, you got Benjamin on the islands, you got Israel scattered all over. But as a as a nation of being Yasha Allah, all right, Hebrew Israelites, we've been divided and we've been destroyed, you know, to believe in these uh, names in which our conqueror put on us. All right. You're not a, a so-called Haitian. You're not a so-called West Indian. OK. You're not a so-called black African-American. You're not a Puerto Rican. You're not a Mexican. You're an Israelite. You're not a black Israelite, all right? You're a Hebrew Israelite, okay? Because Esau likes to uh, put that on us to keep the um, the byword, all right? And ma majorly, he wants to demonize us so that he can persecute us. So anyway, you know, these, these things you must know. You know, you must know those things because we're living... In these times, all right, where the scriptures does say the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy time. So verse five, it says, for they have consorted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. All right. And then it goes into all of the nations and the number one uh, nation at the very top. It says the tabernacle of Edom, which is Esau. All right. Then it says Ishma, the Ishmaelites of Moab, the uh, Hagarines, Gabal, the Ammon. And Amalek and the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joint with them. They have hopped in the children of Lot Shalai, which proves that, all right, that these kings who have their lands, these other nations who have their lands and, you know, they are kings in their land over their people have have came together with Edom. 
and have me uh, consorted together with one consent, and they are confederate against Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and his people. All right. So now I'm gonna move on real quickly, and I want to go to the book of Job, Job chapter twenty. All right, and um, this is verse four. It says, "Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment, though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? All right. So you know I did, went over this before. That word excellency goes into pride. So." The Lord is saying that the triumph of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. So that means that they're not going to live out this long, you know, decade after decade after decade after decade, you know, 50, 100, you know, years when we all transhumans. OK, because the triumph of the wicked is short. You know, they have a moment. They play their part in the Lord's movie. All right. But guess what? It says the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. So they're not going to live long, meaning they're not going to rule and reign long. All right. Matter of fact, I believe I believe that some revelations. The scriptures say uh, this is a short season for Esau. All right. His kingdom was cut in half from the Roman uh, Roman Empire period, the pagan Roman Empire period. All right. Till uh, till uh, 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 the Borgia family came into power. All right, which is uh, you know, them also going into um the Renaissance, you know, which means rebirth. All right, they whitewashed pictures and they came back into power. So anyway, it says though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds. All right, when he reached the height and elevation of his pride. All right, it says yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as the dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. So while Esau's in their slogan and their plan is to build back better, the Lord said, ye shall build, but he will throw down. We read that in Malachi. And now we're reading here in Job 20, where the Lord said, he shall fly away as a dream. All right. And shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye which also saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. Verse 10. His children shall seek to please the poor. And his hands shall restore their goods. Because why? Esau, when they fall, they're not only just going to fall. They're going to go into captivity. They're going to go into slavery. All right. Under Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. And his peoples. And his elect is chosen. It says his children shall seek to please the poor and his hands shall restore their goods because you Edomites are going to build our kingdom up. You're going to build our places. All right. It says his bones are full of sin of his, of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it. And forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth. Yet his meat and his bowels is turned. It is the gall of apse within him. He have swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. Yahweh shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of apse. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks, the honey and butter that which he labored for. Shall he restore and shall not swallow it down according to his substance shall the restitution be and he shall not rejoice therein because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor because he have violently taken away in house which he builded not and that poor is Israel. Okay, the poor is us. It says surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desire. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. Yeah, because um, you Edomites, when these things start to happen and the Lord turned the tides, okay, he turns the tides and he puts you in a position 
you know, where you're you're taking the L in the loss. All right. You're going to be destroyed. You're going to feel this this quietness. You're going to feel afraid. You're going to feel terrified. All right. Because you're going to lose it all. You know, the Lord knows how to build a man up with pride. And he knows he knows how to take it all away within a matter of seconds. All right. Within one hour. OK. Everything that uh, uh, Esau has established or accomplished. All right. Through slavery by him being blessed. And the Israelites being cursed and being his slaves. And he built up this excellency, his pride. At that very height, you're going to be taken out of power. Okay? And that's why I want to get down here to the 23rd verse. And I'm going to wrap it with that. Because while he's eating. Alright, so anyway, verse 20. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. So there's nothing that's going to be saved of Esau's. When the Lord come destroying this place and, and ultimately by the ways of thermonuclear fire. All right. When America, North America, Babylon, the great will become that lake of fire. All right. Verse 21. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Yeah. And that wicked. Is uh just means the laborer, all right? It's talking about the ones that was captive, which has uh, which uh, which is us Israelites, okay? Who was captive? Who was labored? All right, workmen who suffered, okay? When he is about to fill his belly, Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. See, while he is eating, because when he starts to go and chip, all right, and and that M O T B. Uh, starts to play his course and fulfill prophecy, all right, for his end goal, all right, end all to be all, his end goal, the Lord is going to allow him to eat. But while he's eating, the Lord said he shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. So Esau is going to eat. So that means people are going to be, you know, marked, okay? People are going to take that mark, karagma, okay? It says, Yahweh shall cast the fury upon his, Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the boar still shall strike him through. All right, because these elites, you know, they're going to flee from the thermonuclear missiles. All right, and this is why they're underground right now, you know, in these uh, tunnels, what you call it, I forgot the name of the place, but they in these mountains. All right. Some of them is, you know, looking to go up into the uh, heavens and and, and kind of hover, you know, right then within space and our, you know, skies, you know, then it's, it talks about in the sea. All right. I remember seeing China. There's reports with China actually doomsday prepping and going into the waters. All right. So how much more Esau, you know, they China's doomsday prepping and having shit that's under the waters, man. All right. Or even um, certain mobiles, mobiles, chariots that can float on the water that's supposed to be indestructible to a nuclear uh, blast. All right. Like a like a bubble. You know, I saw that a couple of months back, maybe a year ago, I think. But anyway, it says it is drawn. It cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittery sword cometh out of the gall. Terrors are upon him. And that's them thermonuclear missiles, them ICBMs. All right. Coming out of his silos. It says, all darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. All right. So that's basically the lesson. I didn't want to make it too long. But uh, Lord willing, I pray it's edifying. All right. Um, you know, Esau and his agenda for his new world order is to build back better. All right. But the Lord said in Malachi that he would throw down. All right, the Lord said in Malachi that he would throw down. All right, my Esau thinking he can rebuild as he's been building. You know, and he's getting away. He's he's gotten away. You know, with all of his resets. You know, for depopulation. This is the last time he uh, he's gonna have the the position or the attempt to depopulate and try to you know eliminate Yahweh 
out of the picture. All right, because this is more than money. It's not about money. It's about power and control. It's about Esau versus the heavenly father. Okay, and his son. And this is why Yahweh, Yahweh bringing his son back for a second return to fight. All right, and they're going to fight against Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And you're going to fight against uh, his angels. And that's why we're seeing the angels ride. Uh, in those vehicles which the world calls UFOs today because they're showing themselves all right and Esau is frightening and it's also giving them that rush you know because they know if that they have but a short time so Lord willing I pray this lesson was edifying I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakakodash double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well salutations to the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad Shalom it's about building this country back better. Build back better. Building back better our economy. Build back better. All elements of the Great Reset are fundamental to building the future we need. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. There you have it. Not me saying it, it's them. 